I was always drinking, so I'd never been sober long enough to experience a withdrawal, and that was the first time it was it was crazy. Um, so drunk, drunk, drunk. The next day, blah 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 blah. I don't remember how much time passed on or passed by before I realized that yo, I'd messed myself up, I'd messed my life up, I'd messed my body up, I'd messed up um, the job opportunity of my lifetime. And I realized, or oh, you know, I told myself that not much else would be worth doing after this. And that's when I, I made the decision that I was going to take my own life. So um, my very first attempt, um, you remember all this medication I told you that I had with me? I took everything, put it in, um, I, I, I served myself a drink and I swallowed as much as I could of, of it. Um, I was already pretty, you know, I was pretty juiced at this point. So I went and lay in bed and, you know, waited to die. Um, <laughs> that, that, that was terribly disappointing seeing as we have in this conversation. Um, I, I woke up the next day to the sounds of children playing by the pool or something like that. And, you know, when, when, when I tried getting out of bed, I realized that um, right there, right next to the bed, I'd thrown up and all the tablets and capsules were still intact. Yeah. So it's like I had blacked out immediately after I went to bed and I threw up everything. Uh, so, so, you know, that was terribly disappointing. And, and now just the anxiety of being alive was starting to get to me. So um, very quickly, I, I sat down and tried to come up with another plan. In the, in the back balcony of, of the villa, there was, there was this space that had been allocated for, for you to hang your clothes or whatever um, after washing them. So there was, um, there was one of those um, wires that you, you use uh, to hang your clothes. So I went and untied it nicely. Um, the terraces of, of, of the roof of, of the villa had crossing beams yeah, in, all, in, in all the rooms upstairs. So I went and rigged up the, the rope nicely and kind of set it up because it was pretty early in, in the day. I was like, you know, I'll, I'll take care of that business later. I didn't, I didn't want um, an opportunity where someone was going to discover me, for instance. So, you know, set it aside. Um, it was rigged, closed the room so that no one else would go there. Went back downstairs and went about the business of drinking or whatever else. Um, a bit later on, I don't remember the exact time, it was a bit late in the night, I went upstairs. I was really smashed and I, I, I remember just crying and, and being disoriented. It was a, such, such a dark feeling. Um, anyway, so I went upstairs and with those these small stools that were available, um, it's like um, bed signs on, on the bed. So I used one and got up on the rig and, you know. So again, I, I wake up the next day really really freaking disappointed um there was just a shooting pain in my back um only to realize that you know the rope had cut you know um i was really big if you think i'm big now i was big i was big I th um, at, at one point i was 115 kgs or something like that so i hadn't factored that uh, i was a bit too heavy for the rope so it kind of broke at some point and so i i decided that i needed um a more foolproof plan. During my three or so weeks there, um, I, I had made a friend who was a beach boy. Allow me not to disclose his name. Um, and you know, I called the guy. Um, he, he knew that I, I was very liquid at that point. So I told the guy, hey dude, I'm fearing for my life. I'm, I, I figure someone is trying to rob me or something like that. Uh, do you have any idea how I can get my hands on a gun? And he's like, hey, okay, it's that dire. I was like, yeah, yeah okay, sorry. Um, call you back in a bit. So he made a few calls. Then he called me back. He told me, um, hey, dude, look for, I think it was 35 or 38,000. It was not, it was less than 40K. I, I don't remember very well. So, um, yeah, immediately he came through. I, I gave him the chums. Um, he went, he came back with um, a revolver um, that had three rounds. Um, so he gave it to me and we sat down and we had drinks. I needed to prove it to him that all was well, that the gun was literally for my safety, you know. Um, so a bit later on, um, towards the early evening, he left and I was alone in the house. 
um, important to note is um, by this or by this point I had changed my my phone number um, I, I took on a new sim card and no one knew that number just a few selected people so there was this guy a few guys at the place where I was staying and a few you know uh, other people that I'd made um, contact with uh, but more importantly my girlfriend didn't have the number or anyone else including my employer who were probably busy looking for me because I'd officially been AWOL for almost three weeks no one knew where I was um, so anyways um, that evening um, having my I remember it was a Friday if I'm not wrong because I remember um, KTN were, were playing there's a time they were playing a lot of James Bonds on Fridays it was during it was during that time I remember watching James Bond or trying to watch James Bond so I remember at some point I'd drawn all the curtains um, and I had um, the blue label of Bordeaux over there um, there was a pack of cigarettes um, and, and there was a revolver right there and you know I, I remember uh, looking at them and thinking you know uh, this is it this is gonna work this this is literally my last few moments here um, the, the, the strangest thing happened yeah, almost immediately after that I I honestly to this day cannot figure out how that happened 